Hello, everyone. So we'll get started here in a second. Uh, we're still letting people come in. Uh, we had 107 register for this, which is awesome. Um, really cool, so thank you for that. Uh, we'll talk about some cool Dynamo stuff and uh, get started here in a second. Um, we will have questions during it. Aaron's sitting right next to me right here. So we're, we're both right here to be able to lead this webinar and he'll walk up now. <laughs> So we're here. Uh, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat um, or ask the questions, raise your hand or whatever, and Aaron's able to facil uh, facilitate those. Uh, so as we get questions, we'll try to answer them. I hope there's questions because I love questions. Um, those are some of the best, um, the best things that happen during a webinar presentation is when there is questions. Um, it's, it's amazing. So we already had one. Uh, it asked if they if we'll have access to this video after the webinar and. Of course you will. Uh, we're recording this. So this is being recorded and it will be on uh, YouTube afterward. It should also be streaming on YouTube live. I don't know if I set that up. It will be on YouTube after. <laughs> so that's kind of the point. Uh, so we'll have that streamed because I didn't set up the YouTube live streaming. But yeah, so if you have questions, that works for us. I answered that question, so that way that one's gone. <laughs> so yeah, how many do we have coming in now? So we got 30 on here now. Awesome. I should have played like some cool music like while we were waiting. <laughs> yeah, so I have all these like I have a lot going on on this screen right now. It's a little hectic. <coughs> so we got some people in chat going to. Hi, Daniel. So I have questions. I'll let you look at the questions. That way I can save some real estate. <laughs> we need some animated GIFs, of course. We'll get some of that going. Everyone expects it. It's all expectations now to actually have animated. I'm saying GIF because I'm near Aaron right now, but I normally say GIF. Uh. <laughs> I don't want to make Aaron mad while I'm at his place. So I'm correcting myself um, out of respect of his house. <laughs> Maybe I can switch to GIF. I, I like to be a troublemaker. Yeah, it takes people off. It's funny. Cool. Someone said, oh, no. Tom. Hey, Tom. <laughs> awesome. So we got 30 people in. That's, that's pretty good so far. Uh, probably give them a few more minutes. I know it's a lot of people's lunchtime. We'll try to keep it to an hour unless we get really excited, which tends to happen as well. Um, and we'll hang out as we have questions, too, of course. I'm going to close that chat. I'll make sure this thing's working. My little clicker. I don't like putting my mouse on the screen. Yeah, nice. Even though it's not a live presentation, I still like to have a laser pointer. Nice. I'll point it at the screen the whole time. Um, so I guess if people want to, how many monitors are you using? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have 10 monitors right now. Just kidding. Are you able to answer them? Yes, yeah, you are. Yeah. Cool. And Dan said, thanks for this. And our answer to that is, of course. Oh, uh, welcome. <laughs> of course, we're, we're happy to do this stuff. Um, when, when Aaron and I were talking about me coming out and visiting and looking around and him showing me some of the ropes, uh, I was like, you know what? We need to do a webinar and talk about some of the stuff that we've been showing um, because we release a lot of teasers on Twitter and whatnot, and maybe we should break it down and show people. So that's kind of, that's Tom kind Whitehead of what came from. says, theirs go to 11. I think you need to show them the about page. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll show that, and then we'll, we'll work some in and some of the UI. Um, as long as 
my computer behaves because I'm going to, I'm going to take it to 11 for sure. <laughs> uh, so we have, I think we have 32. I think we could probably get started. I think that's probably fine. I'll close this window. Uh, remember, ask questions as much as you want. We'll get in them. We have Dynamo 1.3 stuff to show today. Dynamo extensions, which are add-ons to Dynamo. Dynamo 2.0 examples and what's new in Dynamo 2.0. And a few other little things. We're going to talk about a few things coming up for built. I didn't add AU on here, but we are going to AU. So we have AU classes. So we'll be there hanging out. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get rolling. It won't all be PowerPoint, but I always like to start out with a PowerPoint because it does give me something good to give out to everyone with the data set as well. So if you don't know who we are, I don't know how you got here, but uh, we're a Parallax team. Uh, we got Aaron, who's the director. He's, you can probably see him if he waves. Uh, you got me, I'm John. I've been with Parallax since February. I'm, I'm a design technologist. I do Dynamo stuff. I play with GIFs or GIFs quite a bit and uh, build a lot of custom tools and do some really cool stuff for some awesome clients. So uh, I started out building Revit content at an architecture firm and I kind of transitioned from that to doing Dynamo workflows and now coding add-ins and just kind of just having fun with stuff and helping people do better work in the industry. So if you're interested in anything about us, you can go to our website or reach out to us on Twitter, Revit forum, the Dynamo forum, wherever, or at the conferences. Uh, that's kind of like my one ad slide. Uh, so I wanted to share a few updates before too. Uh, we had the privilege of going to the UK Dynamo user group back in June in, in London. Uh, this was a, a great workshop um, that we were able to lead and um, show some people some really cool stuff. The UK Dynamo user group, all those guys and gals are super interested in Python. So that leads to the next link that I'm providing. And you'll have this data set after the presentation. Uh, Sol, uh, he has a magnificent Python resource now on the web, and I'll open that window, with examples. We're actually going to use one of these in Dynamo 2.0 today, uh, as long as it cooperates. But he has Python scripts in here that are so heavily annotated. So we have stuff like if you've ever opened a Python script and you look at these imports at the beginning and you don't know what they mean, he has comments explaining what each thing does now. So it's this amazing resource that just started. And he's a great dude. Uh, if you don't know him, get to know him because he's really nice and approachable. But if you're interested in Python, head to this link. Uh, I've contributed a few things and it's open for the community um, to contribute as well. So I, I highly suggest it because that did come up so much in London. So I imagine other people are interested as well. So that's kind of where that came from. Uh, so we'll get into some examples. So after the UK Dynamo user group, I had a few questions um, through the Dynamo forum and through email. Um, this one comes up quite a bit, is generating room elevations uh, on your plans automatically. Uh, it's something that's kind of like not fun to do manually, but you can semi-automate it and refine it. So that's kind of one thing that we're, that we're going to show is how to do a room elevations all four directions with Dynamo Player. So we'll jump into that one here in a second. We will also look at some more Dynamo Player stuff. So I manage a Dynamo package called Rhythm um, that we pump a lot of cool stuff into. A lot of times if we need a custom node at Parallax, we'll just bundle it in Rhythm. That way everyone can have it as well. It's something that we really are passionate about is being able to distribute workflows and just make it a little easier to manage. Uh, so I have a new helper message class um, node in there as well. Uh, I deleted some little pop-ups I had in Rhythm and on Revit forum, a uh, few people were like, where the heck did these go? So I got, I caught a little flat for it, but I added them back way better than before. So those are now in Rhythm. So I'm going to show an example with that. Uh, this example actually deletes all of your elements in your active view and it's really scary to have it all hooked up like it is but with the little pop-up, we're able to prevent it. So it's kind of like a proof of concept of halting a workflow. Uh, that one I won't talk about right now. And then we'll look into Dynamo 2.0. So if you guys want to just throw it in the chat or something, uh, how many people are using Dynamo 2.0? Why are you using it? That'd be cool. And we'll look at it here in a little bit. Uh, 
Right now at Parallax, most of our workflows are built with Dynamo 1.3 in mind, and that's because we support a lot of clients back to 2016 Revit. Uh, 2.0 is uh, compatible with 2017 through 2019. That's all documented, uh, documented on the Dynamo primer as well, which is, um, has recently been updated by us. So we did that with Autodesk uh, for Dynamo 2.0. Uh, so if you ever have questions on implementing 2.0, hit us up because we know how great it is and also how terrible it is in other places. <laughs> um, additionally, we'll look at some new features. I'll probably go ahead and close this for now and uh, we'll look at those when we get in Dynamo 2.0. All right, so that's my desktop. That's fun. All right, so I have my main screen right here. So you're gonna see a side shot of me a little bit. I hope you guys don't mind. But what we're going to do is we're going to build a workflow that's usable in Dynamo Player to be able to, if I can remember, yeah, to be able to halt a workflow. So I mentioned that it's in rhythm. So what we could do is I have a sample model open, uh, Dynamo's on the Manage tab. If I go ahead and open up Dynamo and just click New, we're going to look through and figure out how to halt something. So in my active view right now, I have just a floor plan. So what we'll do is we'll just search for all elements in active view. It's going to think for a minute because it's collecting a lot of stuff. And it has 1300 elements. A lot of those are internal elements. So I'll hide the node. And then in a awesome package called spring nodes, there's a delete node. So out of the, out of the box, you're not able to delete things. That's on purpose because the Dynamo team doesn't want you to hurt yourself too bad. But thankfully we have custom packages and Spring Nodes is one that offers the ability to delete stuff. So all you do is you literally feed this elements and then you tell it true to run. If you want a workflow that's really big to have an option to be canceled, you're able to do stuff like that using some built-in methods in Dynamo. So in Rhythm, we actually have helpers now as well. And if I can get my little drawing tool. So we have this helpers class or this whole collection of methods that we can now use. Uh, one of which is a simple user message that just pops up and tells you something. And another is a user message that actually lets you choose what you wanna do. So if I place this node, oh, that one's a simple one. I need to do the user message. So if I place this node, I can tell people a little caption so I can say, Hi there, and that'll be the window title. That's chugging for a second. I'm gonna put it on run manually. We can tell them, are you sure you want to do this? Or something like that. So now when you plug these in and I feed it elements, so a list of elements and I hit run, it'll actually ask people if they want to do that action. So they'll say, are you sure you want to do this? If you click yes, it feeds the elements out. But if I refresh it, and I'll hit F5 to run, and F5 again, it'll tell you, are you sure? You click no, it'll output an empty list, and there's no harm done. So if you need to cancel a workflow or troubleshoot a workflow, you can use nodes like this that interrupt it. So that's kind of why I wanted to show that, because it was a question on Revit forum, um, just to be able to show that to everyone as well. Um, this is in the latest version of Rhythm. I actually just updated it to accept the list. So you'll have to get the latest version, which I'm publishing today. Uh, other things we have are like getting your current user's name, um, things like that. But I wanted to show those to everyone. Good, no questions on that one. Everyone's happy with that one, I hope. <laughs> cool. So another one that I mentioned on the PowerPoint was creating room elevations per room. So if I was working on a model, I would come through and I would actually go through and I would build elevations like this or whatever and start to point at each corner of the room at each side. Uh, we're able to automate that stuff using Dynamo in some pretty awesome ways and also using custom packages. Uh, so rather, so what we'll do as we'll just do new for a graph. And once again, you'll get all these workflows after this call, we'll send out a link to everyone. Uh, that's the only reason we got your email for this is just to send that one email with the data set. We won't spam you, we don't believe in that at all. 
Uh, if you want us to email you, email us and tell us, hey, I like updates, and then we'll do it, but I'm not going to sign you up for anything otherwise. So what we're able to do is if you haven't heard of a package called Data Shapes, I don't know where you've been, <laughs> uh, you need to get into it because it allows you to do some really cool pop-ups and things like that. Um, I'm getting like notifications that there's a hand raise. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, Ruben's raising his hand. Uh, Ruben, uh, you want to type in the chat? Yeah, type in the chat or in the questions and we can get to it. Yeah. Oh, and then I have to fulfill the, the animations. We'll talk about that a little more in a little while. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at Data Shapes. So Data Shapes is a custom package from a guy named Mustafa. Uh, he does awesome work and it's really cool for Dynamo Player. So what you're able to do is you're able to build these forms and put inputs into it to build really cool workflows. Uh, some of the stuff he has uh, are like select model elements. Um, this is a data node, so this feeds into a pop-up form for you to be able to use it. I'll switch to manual once again. I run manually on presentations because a lot of times Zoom or GoToMeeting take a lot of resources. What you're able to do is um, you're able to feed in a category to do a filtered selection of. So if you're creating elevations by rooms, you don't want to select walls or the elevation markers or annotation. So what you're able to do, if I look for categories, we'll go rooms. If I feed it a category and hit F5 to run, it'll actually build this little input thing. If you're ever curious what kind of data you're working with in Dynamo, use a type node. So it's called object.type and it'll tell you what kind of thing you're dealing with. In this case, it's a Python thing that needs to feed into a data shapes pop-up. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll, the button text by default is select model elements. So I'm going to go ahead and do a code block for text and do select rooms and plug that into button text and hit F5 again. And then what we need to do is build a pop-up with that. So there's this concept of a multi-input form plus plus uh, that we can use. So this takes inputs. It takes a description. So we can type in like generate elevs by rooms or something like that. And you can even put in your logo to have some branding. So what we'll do is we'll actually put in the logo for this, this session. The button text by default is set values, and I'll show you what that is in a second. So we just need to tell it to run. I'll hit F5. So once it builds the form, it takes a little longer on the first run. It'll build this nice form for you to be able to do some really cool things. So if I were to minimize Dynamo, this form persists. It stays um, visible for me. If I do select rooms, it does something really cool. Now I have an isolated selection of just room elements. This is huge because I've seen workflows where you use select model elements and people pick other stuff. That's not what you want. You want rooms. That's what I'm expecting. So if you click rooms and hit finish and then hit set values in this case, it will output those, in my case, uh, five rooms that I selected. Really cool because now I have that isolated down to what I want. So I'm building better Dynamo graphs uh, along with that workflow. Uh, for the button text, I don't really like for it to say set values. So like you can say like create them or something really witty. If you want to get more uh, GIFs or GIFs in your inputs, that's also really easy through image data. So we can see that all of these are data nodes. If I were to find one, so if I'll go file path again, and I'll just copy that file path. And let's find one. I think I have one. Let me find a, a good one. So what we'll do is we'll find a cool GIF to use. I just drug my thing off on the other screen. That one. So you might see the name, but we'll leave it as a surprise somewhat. Now if I use a list.create, this is a concept you have to get familiar with in Dynamo um, because you can't put multiple wires into an input. One thing though is if you hold down shift, I can just reuse that output. That's something that we learned at Dynamo DC, which is another user group and 
I love that. Uh, like that command's awesome. <laughs> it saved it saved me so much time. So now if I hit run, we'll get a new pop-up window with the new button and the animation playing. So now what you could do is you could start to have these things that react. Uh, I like to embed stuff like this because people are like, did you really put Carlton dancing in the pop-up window? And I'm like, yeah, you ran my graph, sweet. So now I start to know when people use my tools, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll actually go back through and select more rooms and hit finish and hit create them. It's not going to create anything yet because we're not quite done, but I do have rooms to work with. So now what we can do is we can just flatten this output. I like to flatten the um, output from the node and hit run. We can now work with these rooms. So what we'll do, I don't want to run too short on time, so we'll actually go to the pre-cooked version real quick. Uh, what we'll do is I'll open the pre-made version and we'll look at that. Oh, it's on run automatically, so let me pick some rooms. And we'll break down the logic. I want to get into Dynamo 2.0 since it is so new. And you can also have a cancel button. So now, if you saw, I did have some elevations up here. That's all happening right here in this Dynamo graph. So from the output of the room selection, this is an out of the box node. We get the, the center boundary of the room around it. We get the first item of those lists. So this would be if your rooms have multiple loops, which these, um, I don't think they do. But if your room's like a donut shape, always get the first list because that'll be the very outside boundary. Very cool tip. I actually learned that from looking at some code from the case apps whenever they did open source those and it was really cool to find out. Um, so it's always been like that in my experience. So it's a good tip. Uh, from there, we're generating a polygon and then we're getting the center of the polygon. The reason we're doing that is because if you get the room location, sometimes people place rooms in some weird spots. Um, so if you just build your own center point, you don't got to deal with any of that, which is awesome. Another thing that you do is you create the little host elevation marker, which is the circle in the middle. So you create that and then you create the views on top of it after the fact. Um, and those are all custom nodes also in rhythm. Uh, we also have a spring node in here. Uh, one topic that we'll talk about at my built class quite a bit is annotating custom nodes. So I, I'm a believer in custom nodes and building workflows that save you time. Uh, using custom nodes saves you time as well. Handing them off without telling people what packages it has, that's kind of a not so great way to be. So what we do is we actually annotate every custom node with the name of the package and the version. A lot of people have asked me, John, are you really telling me to put a note manually by hitting control W, typing rhythm 2000, are you really telling me to do that on every node? And I tell them, yeah, I, I am. Uh, I'm not telling you to do it manually. I am telling you to use something that will do it. And in that case, that's where this awesome piece of technology comes into place uh, is an extension. So what we'll do is I'll actually clear all the notes first and I'll show how this works. So if I want to distribute a dynamo graph to people that's really usable, I want to note those things. So what we'll do is through our extension, we'll actually hit annotate custom nodes and it adds notes for me automatically. If I move stuff and hit annotate, it'll move them back. So this tool is a free tool from Parallax. We, uh, we're still tweaking a few things on it, um, but we're, we're planning on having like an installer completely available to everyone for free um, through built. Um, Comic Sans is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. We had a quick question about the rooms. Oh yeah. Uh, what if the rooms have more than four walls? If the rooms have more than four walls and your elevation marker supports that, you can, and we'll look at that part of the code, you can feed that in right here. So if you have an elevation marker, like ours I think supports like eight directions. Yeah. If you have one that supports like eight directions, you would just feed in zero to eight or to seven in this case, because Dynamo starts at zero index. Um, so if you have, for however many you have, you can feed that in. And that would look something like 0 .7. Uh, If you wanted to be specific, you can do something like 0, 3, 6, 8. And that would put it at the 0, the first one, the third one, the sixth one, and the last one, or something like that. Um, so yeah, the create elevations in specific directions. Just um, 
what you need to do is you need to find out which one is which. It's typically in order of creation, I think, counter or clockwise. So just experiment with it. Uh, with Dynamo, if you create things and you hit undo, so what we'll do is you hit undo with your Dynamo script, you can do things and start to experiment as well. Um, so yeah. Zero starts left, someone said. So yeah, if you're starting at zero and you want to do one on the left side, and then on the right side, you do zero and two, for instance. So that's very doable. I always suggest trying it out, though, because um, if you have more in there, it might act a little different. The concept of how to create elevations is a little weird because you have to create the marker first and then the views on it. Uh, so that is one thing to consider. Uh, we are going to talk about extensions quite a bit here in a second. But one thing we might have noticed is those rhythm notes aren't in the group. Um, extensions, like I said, are add-ons to Dynamo. So if you've ever used the Clockwork package, there's a guy named Andreas who actually has a extension as well called um, Monito. Uh, so what you could do is you can actually fix groupings of stuff and regroup things. So rather than me build that into mine, I just use his. So if you need to fix your little groupings, you can do that as well. His are documented on his um, website as well, um, and the links are in the data set. There's a couple more room questions, but I'll let you just figure out if you want to do them now or if you want to answer them. Yeah. Them. What was one of the room questions? Uh, so the first one was, what if you want to create elevations in specific directions with the data sheet pop up? Yeah, so the specific directions would definitely be, um, would definitely be that you need to pick which ones. If you need to rotate this, that would be out of the scope of that graph. And the other one is, what if you have a curved wall? Where does the cut plane? Um, so the cut plane by default is centering on this um, callout when you automate it. So I kind of, I kind of always say you automate and refine. Um, don't don't trust Dynamo to just have it perfect, but it will help you do it faster. Um, the elevations one comes up a lot because it is something that's kind of like involved, if you will, as well. Cool. And one more question popped up. What about aligning elevations to a grid line? All right. So if you wanted to align to a grid line, luckily in Dynamo, what you could do, and what we'll do is I'll just close this graph. And we'll just run it, not custom node. Do select model element. If you want to work with grid lines, luckily those are an element that has locations. So if I do grid.curve, now I would have my grid line element selected with Dynamo. If I wanted to get a point along that to place an elevation at, there's this concept of point at parameter, where parameter is a number between 0 and 1. So if I wanted to do it right in the middle, 0 0.5 would be the parameter, and that would be my elevation location point. Um, so it's 0 to 1 because there's pretty much an infinite numbers between 0 and 1, so you can choose where you want it. So if I were to do 0 0.25, that's a quarter of the line, and we can see my point right there. So I would just get the grid line points, and then I'd place it, and then I'd pick which side I want it on. Uh, people asking about beginner books or uh, courses, um, if you don't go to Built or AU, I suggest that you do. I, I actually learned Dynamo. So I opened a little story, a little tangent. I opened Dynamo for the first time in 2013 when it was still yellow nodes and I didn't know what to do. And I started clicking and Revit crashed and I, I didn't open it for a year. Um, frankly, it scared the hell out of me. Uh, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm in over my head. AU 2014 came up a year later and I was like, well, I'm still interested in this Dynamo thing. So I took some classes from Marcelo Scambaluri, hands-on labs, and once he explained something, it like changed my thinking. Uh, the example he showed was mapping two parameters together. So we were literally getting the bottom of a wall elevation and tying it to something else and moving them together and it clicked. Uh, so I suggest looking at AU for sure. Uh, there are a few things out there, a few, and I won't plug any providers because uh, you, you'll have to find them. There are a few providers out there that have courses as well. Um, one person that I, I think is a fantastic beginner instructor is Ian Siegel. Uh, I watched one of his classes that built a beginning Dynamo class last year, 
and people were asking me why I was in there. And I'm, I'm someone who learns from watching people present as well. Uh, he explains things in such an amazing way. So if you ever have a chance to take a class from Ian Siegel, uh, do it, because uh, he's a cool guy. Uh, there's another question about elevating specific walls instead of rooms. Is yeah. Really yeah, these are good questions. So if you wanted to elevate specific walls, it would be similar to what we just did with the grid. Uh, you can literally select the wall, get its location. So get location is an out of the box node. It'll report the wall's curve. And now I can get the center point of that wall. If you need that to be offset from the wall, what you do, you can translate that point out. So there's this idea of translate. I'll make this full screen. So there's this idea of translating geometry in Dynamo. So if I type in like minus 50, because I think this is metric, this template or this file, and it might not be. So if I type a translation of negative one, it'll start to offset it out. If I type in one, it'll go the other way. So what you can do is build that to where you pick a wall and it pops it another way and generates an elevation. That's a good question too. Um, elevating walls is a good one. I didn't even think of that. Cool. Uh, one, one more question came in. Tom Whitehead was asking, because uh, framing elevations natively lock to grids um, for like structural framing. Um, and I was saying, I just don't know if you can use a framing elevation yeah, I think that's a different tool entirely. I think um, that node is using the like typical elevation tool. Um, I don't have a solid answer on that one though. So I, I would I'd say like try and define it as that view family, but I, I think it's a fundamentally different in the API. Cool, so I think that's, we're caught up. So Dynamo 2.0, I have the wrong screen showing. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, Dynamo 2.0 is out, has a lot of different stuff. Uh, I mentioned Python earlier, so that's a great resource. So what we can do is um, pull a graph from there and look at what it does. Um, color Picker, cool UI to pick colors is now out of the box. Adam Sheether did that one. Awesome. That was a custom package at first, but now it's out of the box. So that's great. Uh, you can now append text to files. So if you have a text file that's tracking runs, you can append to the end of it. Uh, we won't show that, but that's in there, so check it out. And then I don't know if anyone's used Excel workflows. Most people, when they start Dynamo, um, they start out using a, a write to Excel and read from Excel. It now does not open. You can like make it not open Excel. Amazing, because I hate when I'm doing a presentation, Excel's like, I want to own the place. So now you can hide Excel. Um, directory contents, if you've ever used that one, um, used to only look in the outside directory. Now it can keep looking deeper. So if you need to do things like family upgrades or Revit file upgrades, you can, it's called recursively look down into the subfolders. Uh, really cool, and we'll look at a few of those things as well. I think I skipped a slide, yeah. Uh, we'll look at it and I'll just kind of explain them all rather than go through the slide. So what we'll do is I'll close this Dynamo 1.3 and we'll leave Revit open. We'll jump to my other instance of Revit with Dynamo 2.0. So if you open, if you have Dynamo 1.3 and 2.0 installed uh, side by side, uh, you'll have a little chooser to choose which version. I normally have Dynamo loaded already just to be faster. We'll click new and we'll look at how it looks now. So in Dynamo 2.0, the libraries are quite a bit different. It looks nicer in my opinion. I really like this category um, images. Um, and there's a few different things in there. So there's this concept of dictionaries as well, and we'll show an example with that. Um, dictionaries are awesome. They're in 1.3 as well, but they're even cooler in 2.0 because there's nodes for it now, which is amazing. Uh, let me jump back to my slides that way I can make sure. Cool. Uh, in Dynamo 1.3 and before, if you wanted to create a list, you can double click and, and type something like 1, 5, 8, 6 for a list of numbers. In Dynamo 2.0, that changed to square brackets. So keep that in mind. Uh, someone mentioned that the searching in Dynamo is a little slow. I think that's a known issue and they're trying to work on it. At first, it wasn't even showing up for me. Um, I think that's because of their migration to try to make it web friendly. Um, so just kind of have some patience. I, I know it's tough. Like I said before, we're not actively developing in Dynamo 1. Uh, in 2.0 for clients. We're just testing it mostly. Um, so I would advise to maybe kind of wait it out like a Revit update. Like 
whenever Revit 2019 comes out, you don't start projects on it that day typically. Um, and unless you just want to be hardcore like Aaron. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, we started projects <laughs> on that. So I would I would advise the same with Dynamo 2.0 now, uh, because it is very it feels like a Revit kind of migration between Revit versions. That's how this Dynamo update feels to me, having used Dynamo for a few years now. Um, it's also not backwards compatible. So if you have a Dynamo 2.0 graph it can't be used in 1.3 or sooner. That's part of the reason like packages like Rhythm are not in 2.0 yet because I don't wanna just tick off everyone all at once. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, 2.0 is awesome and we'll look at some workflows right now. Uh, but I, I would just vet it some. Uh, if you want a list like this in 2.0 though, you just use square brackets and you're good. Very cool, that's awesome. If we want to nest the list further, we add more brackets. That's cool too. If I want to have, <laughs> we're going to get crazy now. If I want to have multiple nested lists, I can do something like that. This isn't something I expect everyone to learn right now. Like I just wanted to make a list that was jagged, that was a little nested to show something else. In Dynamo 1.3, and I'll open an instance of Dynamo 1.3, if you want to flatten something completely out to be a flat list, you type flatten. And you have this beautiful node that does just that. So now if I had, and we're in 1.3 now, if I have one to three, comma, and we'll just actually copy this. This better work like it did in 2.0, right? So now we have that nested. If you wanna flatten it, you had this flatten node that just did it. When I was doing some documentation for Dynamo 2.0, I looked for flatten, and I couldn't find the one from before and it scared me to death. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> I was like, amount? I've seen this node, but I've never used this node. Amount you feed in when you wanna flatten it a certain amount. Uh, one thing that was a little confusing though is if I wanna flatten a list completely, no matter how jagged it is, so if I keep on going with these brackets, the list just keeps going on and on. So if I flatten it at one, and this is all in the primer, it'll just flatten that very outside um, list. But if I want to flatten it completely, what do I do? Uh, come to find out, minus one flattens it completely. So if you're in 2.0 and actively building stuff and you look for flatten, just use list.flatten and it defaults to negative one or type negative one. Uh, so that's kind of like a gotcha that I found uh, as well. So will that break all the graphs that use the other one? So thankfully, whenever you upgrade a 1.3 graph, the Dynamo team was so nice that it replaces it. So thank God. <laughs> so, so we're good, yeah. So upgraded graphs will work, but moving forward, if you look for flatten, you'll see this one. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, another thing that changed was the Python editor is even better. So I don't know how many people used Python, but what we're going to do is just borrow some code from Soul's repo and I hope it collects something. I haven't really looked at that one. If we look for script uh, Python, what we can now do is in 1.3, if you open Python, you have to close it each time you make a change. It makes it really hard to use Python. So now what you can do is you can bring something in and hit run and actually keep working in the background as well. Uh, I don't know what that error is. I just copied it from the GitHub, so that's probably what I did. Yeah, I'm not gonna know what that error is right now. I bet you some of my spacing is off because I copied it. Yeah, some of my spacing is off. If you copy and paste, it's good to like make sure that the spacing's not off, yeah. So we did, we collected literally everything in the model just now. <laughs> so, so, so we're on a bin box, mind you, so good. <laughs> so it's holding up. We're also in 2.0, so all of the room geometry didn't draw, or the tags. So I don't know if you noticed in 1.3, if you get all your tags in a project, it shows all the text in the background, and sometimes it'll actually crash your graphics card. Uh, in 2.0, that doesn't happen. Uh, so what we did is literally collected everything in the model really quickly and just hit run. So as you change this around, if I do something like bracket zero bracket, that'll get the first thing and hit run. I can just keep this running now and have this just float around. 
super amazing. Um, someone mentioned, does Python 2.0 have IntelliSense? It doesn't have anything like that yet. Um, if you want to get an IntelliSense going, um, and for those of you, uh, you who don't know, IntelliSense essentially, it's essentially like in Dynamo when you do like point dot and it predicts it for you. That's something that um, IDEs or integrated development environments uh, like Visual Studio have. Uh, they don't have that in Python quite yet. If you do want that though, you're able to get some of that stuff using Visual Studio code and doing some clever stuff that's documented online by, uh, by Guy. Uh, his name's Guy Tallarico, and he does RevitAPIDocs.com. He has some documentation on how to get this stuff working. Uh, I personally use Visual Studio code and then just copy all of it right into the Python window or do a script from a stream. Um, as well. That way I can have some prediction because it makes you faster as well. Cool. So the Python editor is awesome. We won't show the Excel ones um, right now, but we will look at some examples. So I mentioned dictionaries and I love them. Uh, pre Dynamo 2.0, they were available in code blocks, uh, but they're also available in packages like Spring nodes. So what we can do is we can actually relate things in really cool ways. So I'll jump right into another example. Uh, if you want to get a, a rooms tag, you can't do it in the API. Um, there's no way to do it um, currently that I know of. So if I'm wrong, correct me, and I'm thankful I'm wrong because now I can use that. Uh, but what you can do is use a dictionary to define that. So a dictionary takes keys and values, and it will actually let you return something from it. So if I want to look something up by keys, I can get all of my room tags and actually use those to be able to look things up. It's kind of like a weird thing, but we'll actually do it. So what we'll do is we'll look for categories. We'll look for room tags. This is a question that came up on the Dynamo form once, so that's why it's even an example. We'll look at all elements of category. And then we'll collect all my room tags. Very cool. So what I want to do is I want to look that room tag up by the room. Uh, so I did mention that you can get a room that an element is tagging. So if you look for tagged room, that's actually a rhythm node. Um, so if we plug that in, it'll think. And now I got the room that the tag's tagging. There is an out of the box node to get a tagged element um, if there's a tag, but it doesn't work for rooms. Kind of like a want want moment. So if I want to look up the tag, I can actually do it by something by a string or a text value. So a really good way to look stuff up in Revit and Dynamo is you get the element ID, which is pretty unique. It's like its driver's license number. And convert it to a string or text and make that be my key to look something up by. So now what I could do is I could feed the values in which would be my room tag element. And I can now look up what tag belongs to a room. So if I were to get a key, and in my case, what we'll do is I'll just kind of pick a room element in here. So like 215101. So we'll do 215101. And we put the quotes because it's a string. That's the data type we're dealing with. You can also use a string node if you really wanted. But if you want to be a little faster, use a code block. And you can look up at that value. So if I were to like manually select a room, I can now retrieve the tag by that dictionary. Something I haven't seen be possible otherwise. Um, so you can use dictionaries for looking up sheets. So if you have sheet types, you can look those up. There's an example in the data set to group rooms by level and then look them up by the level and retrieve them from the dictionary. That's really useful for like title block types too. So what you could do is you can have all the sheets that have this prefix need a 30 by 42 and look up that title block and set it or something. Dictionaries are awesome. Um, I use them all the time for family lookups too. Uh, so if I want a certain family to be used, I'll look it up by a dictionary. Uh, previously, what people had to do to do this stuff is like get the index of the eye. It was a nightmare. I'll just leave it at that. So with dictionaries, it's really um, doable and awesome. Cool, so there's that for the Dynamo 2.0. We'll do, 
We're at 1146. Is we'll look at a few more of our extensions. Uh, one other thing I want to point out is a uh, Dynamo Core. So Dynamo has a sandbox version, is what it's called, that runs from without Revit. In Dynamo 2.0, that's been re relocated to Dynamo Core 2, and then Dynamo Sandbox. Uh, in Dynamo 1.3, it's in Dynamo Revit 1.3, Dynamo Sandbox. Something to keep in mind as well. Uh, so now what we'll look at is kind of what I was teasing earlier, is some of our extensions. So extensions are essentially little add-ons to Dynamo. Uh, the Dynamo team, let me open up the link here. I don't know why that alternates. So the Dynamo team did a workshop back in February in London um, to show people how to make them. Uh, they're essentially little add-ons to Dynamo. Um, one thing to keep in mind is they, they don't replace Dynamo packages. Um, in some cases, they can. But what they're really good for is accessing the Dynamo API in a really cool way. Uh, we're able to do cool stuff like find nodes in a graph or things like that. Uh, the examples are all over the place. Uh, we actually have quite a few examples and People are even making jokes about how it's like the hot thing right now to do. Um, but we have things like Andreas, who does the clockwork package. He has ones that will help you find nodes in the workspace. It'll let you have templates to start files with. It will fix groupings, which I'll show again, and things like that. And then we have people like Mark from Design Tech who are building keyboard shortcut buttons. So that's in the bottom, the bottom left corner of the screen. These are all available on GitHub as well. Um, so you'll have to go download those. They have instructions on how to get them. Um, for Dynamo 2.0, Andreas is, is available in the package manager. So that's available just to download for 2.0. But it works in 1.3 as well if you download it. Um, our extensions, uh, I started learning them after watching the video. And the video link is in the data set for the workshop. I started messing with them after watching their video and hacking at their little data set. We have quite a few going on, uh, some that we'll show today. Um, we have things like aligning things better. We have the package usage um, doge that we use. Um, someone asked earlier why Comic Sans. The, that's part of the meme, people. Like, I, I don't love Comic Sans. <laughs> so that, that's part of the whole meme thing. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny just to have fun with it because um, the extension that finds packages is so useful that it was just kind of fun to have fun with something that's not exactly beautiful on its own. Um, and it's just kind of a cool brand. So now when you see that thing, you're going to think of our extension. And now you expect to see it. So uh, in a lot of our extensions, we have little Easter eggs too. So as we release them, let us know if you found one. Um, it's just fun. Uh, we have links to all of the materials. So Andreas is on GitHub. Design Text is on GitHub. And we have our keyboard shortcut that I started on GitHub as well. Uh, so if you want to look at any of those, feel free. Uh, someone mentioned more GIFs or GIFs earlier. Um, so in ours, and what I'll do is PowerPoint is being super strong. PowerPoint is like holding everything up, man. Uh -oh. Well, in ours, we actually have like a whole like disclaimer of how it works as well. Um, and I think it finally opened. Yeah. So this is a super unfinished repo that's holding our keyboard shortcuts, but ours are buttons as well. Uh, once I saw Mark developing it, I open sourced all of mine, and I just kind of left it because he was a little further than me, and I don't want to recreate something that he's um, already doing. Um, so if you want keyboard shortcuts that are little buttons, uh, check his out, uh, or you can look at my code as well, which is linked. Um, so. We have that available. Inside of our window, we have quite a few things. We have our about window that tells you a little bit about this, what this is. And of course, it has a cool reference in it. Um, what's cool about extensions as well is you can open multiple windows and have them floating around. I really like that. Um, I got tired of having to always right click and align nodes. So I'll just double click and put some code blocks. So I built this little UI that'll actually align nodes for you. So it'll float next to your screen. And as you pan through Dynamo, it stays floating. And you can start to do some really neat things with it. So like in my case, if I want to align top, cool. If I want to distribute them, I can do that. 
things like that. Um, I, I just, I got super tired. I, I, I'm kind of like OCD with my dynamo graphs. I got super tired of right click align selection left, right click this. I actually have a gaming mouse that I macroed that, but I don't always carry that one around because it's wired and I was just, and it runs a little slower to be honest. Um, so now we have that little window that does that. Uh, today I actually added a grouping because I don't know if people have noticed whenever you create a group, which you should group your nodes in Dynamo, good package practice. Um, when you add a group, the text size is 30. I think in 2.0, it's 36 even. I think they made it bigger uh, now that I think of it. So the fact that that's happening is kind of annoying because now the groups are really loud, which kind of drives me nuts. So we could do, let me close that extra Revit instance. I don't need that thing. And we'll leave it open. What we'll do is I actually think in 2.0, it's even bigger. They made it 36 and two, I just realized that live on this. I don't know why they think it needs to keep getting bigger. It's kind of drives me crazy. But what we now have is if you want a smaller text, I prefer 24 seems about right to me. If you hit group, it'll create a nice little group with smaller text. It also makes it a color that's not available in the UI. You can actually make these any color you want, which is pretty wild. Um, and I'll actually show that live too. Uh, are we doing good on questions? We're good on questions, yeah. Cool. Um, that PowerPoint like scared the heck out of me. <laughs> so what we can do actually is if we have groups in the graph as well, um, we're able to start to color code them. So I found this out kind of a different way. So we get all of our groups and we set the color. And what we'll do is we'll actually make some groups. And I'll leave them the big text for now. And we'll do this. So now if we do a color picker, which like I mentioned is out of the box in 2.0, we can actually do some really cool stuff with groups and really color code our graphs in cool ways. So this is something that's, um, this was kind of where we started our exploration in the Dynamo API was messing with some of these properties. Uh, we have like a little internal package that I'll release here soon uh, to be able to do these things. I showed this in London as well. And being able to color code groups a little more is kind of a controversial uh, topic <laughs> because now people can have a whole rainbow of colors and you don't know which each one does. So that's why it's not currently like in anything. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll open a custom node graph. Come on, it's thinking. On my other screen, it's thinking. And we'll look at some more of the annotation. So now what we'll do is webinar data set. Cool, so now I just have a graph open with some nodes in it. So if we, if we needed to annotate everything, and I showed this a little earlier, we can use the package usage one. I'll clear my notes and then I'll add my notes. So really quickly, we annotate our custom nodes we can send them to the clipboard. So whenever I make Dynamo graphs, I actually always leave a note in the front with all the packages in it. So now instead of typing that manually, I'm automating it with an extension to Dynamo. Uh, so this one we we're actually talking about like on Twitter recently um, about why is, why is that free? Uh, sim simply, we want people to make better Dynamo graphs. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time I got a graph that I didn't know where nodes came from, I'd be pretty rich, I think. So if we always annotate our graphs really well, it, it makes for a good situation for everyone involved. So we just want the community to be better and that's kind of where that came from. Um, mine currently doesn't add them to the group like I mentioned earlier. So what you can use is something like Monito and be able to fix those groups. So in this case, if you click on these, it'll focus on stuff. So this is what his extension does, Andreas is. And if you hit fix, it'll just go through and fix them. So that already exists. You can open several at a time. Uh, another thing that I want to show, uh, besides my align one, we'll close and we'll open a new one. We'll look at something cool called sticky notes. Sticky notes, this came to mind because I'm always copying and pasting between stuff. Yeah, I'm always copying and pasting between stuff. So 
I'm able to do that really efficiently if I just use like a notepad theme. So the cool thing with some of these is if I have them floating, I'm able to reuse them between graphs and we'll see that now. So if I do like something, we'll just make a sphere. We'll do it by center point radius, cool. So we have a sphere going, we'll do a point. We'll plug that into the center point. We'll give it a radius of like 12, who cares. If I drag this, now we have something that's a little bit modified. And we'll actually just convert this to code. Cool. So now I have a sphere made. If I do a cuboid or something, and we'll actually do this one a different size just to have it a little different. Right click for node to code. Really useful to clean up your projects as well. Uh, connection line. So someone asked, for the group extensions, can you preset a specific group to a color, select nodes, click group input, group data, group Revit? In theory, yes. Um, you can specify if it has a certain name in the title. So in this case, if this group was called data, if you had a qualifier like called data, you could do that. Um, that came from Matt. That's actually a great question and great idea. Um, I'm going to look at it. Um, right now you can't, but I think that'd be a great extension. So if we have groups with a name in them, it'll auto color code. Very cool. Um, if I do get it made, you'll have a little Easter egg in there that says, thanks, Matt. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, pick, pick a GIF and send it to me and we'll embed it hidden somewhere in honor of you. Uh, someone asked if we can have these lines cleaned up to where they're not more spliny, I guess, more curvy. The only other way that you can have the lines right now would be if you go to view connectors, connector type polylines. I haven't seen a lot of people use this version myself, but this is the only one that you can do right now. Um, personally, it's kind of loses some of it to me, uh, but yeah. Or if you're like completely crazy, you can just hide the connectors and do some really crazy. <laughs> don't do that, please. Don't I don't even that. know why that's an option. <laughs> Yeah, so let, let's not do that one. But those are the only two display styles. That being said, I bet you could probably hack at them and do some different stuff. Um, I, I don't know if it's like, if it's bothering you that much. One thing I do is if I have a crazy graph where stuff's doing like this, and I wanna like clean it up a little, I'll actually like do a little code block called pin and just pin them. That way they're a little bit cleaner. Um, you can also go in and like leave notes as to what's filtering through that and say this is the height. So now you have these pinned around the graph with little like notes. So that's how you start to clean up a graph as well. Um, inline notes with slashes are really important. So let me delete that and then we'll get back into the other thing. So if we right click node to code, let's say I wanted to reuse this sphere and this cube in another dynamo graph that's not this one. So reuse some code. So if I copy it, paste it into a note, copy it, and paste it into a note, close dynamo graph, the dynamo graph, those notes persist. They stay on the screen for me. So now what I can do, come back in and reuse that stuff. So these notes are really good for being able just to reuse quick commands as well. Um, I made them post it just because it's kind of fun. Uh, the neat part is you can keep on adding these. So if you keep hitting sticky note, you can just keep on sticking notes to your clipboard. And as you clip them um, at, to your canvas, as you click them, you can reuse them and things like that. Uh, this one does have an Easter egg and I'll just leave it at that. Um, if you find it, let me know. Besides Aaron. <laughs> Dave is asking, does node decode run any faster than the original nodes? So I, um, I attended a presentation by Andreas at AU, and uh, he did some like side-by-side -side test. He, he said that it seems to run a little faster. Personally, uh, I don't have a lot of graphs with a lot of node to code like this because it's kind of hard to troubleshoot. Um, so I'll just take the few seconds hit that it takes to run uh, a regular graph a little longer. Cool, so there's that one. And then I think that's it for our extensions. We're pretty much at time anyway, huh? So yeah, those extensions, we're going to publish a link here soon. Um, it's, it was made 
gearing up for Built North America because we have a class um, talking about how to annotate graphs and things like that. Uh, one last thing that I want to show, and then we'll let everyone get back to their Friday, is I think I can make air in a prisoner. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you able just to share yours? So one thing that comes up a lot, so in London it came up, how do you manage packages on a network? How do you deploy things? How do you do this? I don't use packages because they're hard to deal with. One thing that's came up is like, how do you do that? Well, Parallax, we're a team that's in two different states, and I manage the packages for our team, and then we manage them for clients. So we actually manage them using some pretty awesome tools that I think Aaron will show uh, right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I'll go over this super quick. Um, but so the short version is this is a virtual machine that um, only has a few packages on it uh, at the moment. So we have like RT Lab. Here, let me. Yeah, you might want to unmute yours and I'll mute mine. There we go. Um, so this machine currently only has like five packages on it. It has Rhythm, it has Archilab, it has Data Shapes. Um, and I'm just going to close Revit real quick. But, you know, kind of showing you that in this folder, we only have those few packages installed. But what we do here is John maintains a folder on our network that basically is where we house all of the, all of the graphs that we want on all of the machines. So uh, this folder called packages sits on a server and like when John updates Rhythm, which he updated a couple of days ago, uh, he uploads the current directory for Rhythm into this folder. And what the program does is anytime somebody logs into a computer, it redistributes all of our current packages to them. So like this machine, I did this demo once and it was showing the password, which was really awkward. Um, so we just logged into a machine, like it's Friday morning, we log in in the morning, and if we go back to that packages folder, you'll see it hasn't happened yet, because it does take about 15, 20 seconds to run in the morning when you start your computer. But if we just keep refreshing this and we watch for a second, uh, you'll see that what's going to happen here in a second, after all this other stuff launches, is suddenly all the packages are going to show up. So the package manager is great if you're like one person that needs to just get the updated packages but if you have to distribute them to like a few hundred people and you're updating packages every couple of days it gets to be a pain in the butt and so there's nothing else we need to do if we were to launch revit really quick and go look at dynamo um, the packages are now up to date so there's a bunch of different ways you can do this we, we happen to be using uh gordon price's tool which is called pragmaticpraxis.com um, this tool is much bigger than dynamo uh, package distribution. That's not its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is to help you deploy everything that you have, um, like during your actual installations as well. Um, but if you want information on how we're using this to handle Dynamo, reach out. Um, Dave is saying that he points everybody to a network path, uh, and he asked if there's any downsides. Uh, the answer is there's no downsides if it's working. Um, yeah, so, oh, that's true. So there are a couple of things you need to be aware of. Uh, one is basically the Dynamo help file or whatever says that that's only going to fly if the network drive is less than like 100 gigs, which is like a super small hard drive. Um, and the other thing is that, that we have found like some packages that it just doesn't work on correctly. They just fail to load. Um, and of course, the other thing is if you're on a machine that you travel with, obviously that goes out the window because you end up having to copy them locally when you go traveling anyway. So what we like about this situation is somebody has to update them on the network either way, but this way we're always running locally and when we travel, they're already there. We're just not getting updates on the fly while we travel. Um, but it's kind of a really neat system. There's a couple other versions as well, like John built one. Uh, you built a package, right? That did it on Dynamo launch? Yeah. You're still muted. Uh, it's on the, it's on the, uh, there it is. There you go. Yeah, at Built, I'm actually showing, so there's a slide in the data set. Dynamo has a command line interface. Um, so if you're comfortable building Dynamo graphs, we can actually build a Dynamo graph that you can run on startup that copies packages from a network. Um, so we'll show that at Built at my class. We'll show it live in the booth and we'll do a little video on it after Built. 
And then someone said, is that app free for distributing the content? The pragmatic tools? Because no. uh, the pragmatic tools is, is definitely not free. Uh, and like I said, it's a tool that's meant for doing all of your installations as well. So it handles a lot more than just uh, the Dynamo packages. Um, but stop by the booth or reach out to us. We can show you kind of how it works. Um, there are other kind of solutions you can look at if you want to do this. For, I mean, all the pragmatic Praxis tools are doing in related to Dynamo is they're doing a, a daily mirror. So there are some things you can do with like PowerShell and, you know, uh, log in run tasks and stuff like that. Yeah. So there you go. They're all loaded now. Kind of cool. Yeah. And then, so that built, will show how to do it in the, with Dynamo command line interface. So that does require an install Dynamo, but that's a free version. You know, that's a free way of doing it, but you do have the caveat of having to use Dynamo. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Um, so we answered that one. But yeah, so we'll show that at built. We'll publish like a video on our YouTube about it as well. This will be on YouTube. And other than that, I think that's what we have for today. Some new Dynamo stuff. And you'll get an email after this with the data set. And we'll include the view extension um, as well. So I'll include a link to install our view extension. And once I add a few more features, I don't want to release it. And then I make the sticky notes even cooler. And then I have to send it all to you again. So. Um, yeah, reach out, uh, follow us on Twitter, say hi, say hi in St. Louis and at EU, and uh, thanks for dropping by, everyone. And happy Friday. That's Woo! Oh, must have Dynamo packages. I'll answer it real quick. Oh. Uh, if you go to dynamopackages.com, just pretty much download the top 10. <laughs> I think that's probably one of the fairest ways to say. Uh, the ones that I always have. Clockwork, Spring Nodes, Archilab.net. Um, so Clockwork, Spring Nodes, Archilab.net. I have Lunchbox always. <coughs> uh, Steam Nodes is another good one um, as well. Um, the updates are less often on Steam Nodes. Uh, if you do, uh, if you do any site modeling and you're like me and you don't use Topo, I forget. I think Miss Schmitz is called Landform. Well, yeah, it's Landform. So Landform's it's another good one. freaking amazing. What I'll do is I'll add a slide to the PowerPoint before I distribute it to everyone with some packages that I think are must-haves. Uh, Data Shapes isn't in this top nodes, and that's one that I would definitely suggest having, for instance. A Bumblebee's great. Um, I find for the most part, most, most of the packages that are in the most installed, like the top 10 or whatever, are really good um, for you to try out. So I'll, I'll include something in the data set uh, that says that. Someone asked, can you translate Dynamo graphs into C Sharp? And I'm assuming for um, mocking up like a Revit add-in and then building it. Um, in, in theory, not automatically. You can't transfer them automatically into C Sharp. But I actually, when I started building code, I would do it in Dynamo first and hand off the graph to a programmer. And then she was going through and translating it herself. So Dynamo is a really great, great way to prototype things rapidly. I still mock stuff up in Dynamo before I make like a real Revit add-in out of it. Um, so that's kind of the long answer to that one. I wish there was like a right click make Revit add-in. Not yet. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to turn some Dynamo graphs into Revit add-ins though. <laughs> Automatically, frankly. And someone just said yes. Okay. Cool. So yeah. Answering that with yes. <laughs> So yeah, thank you everyone. We'll probably get this stream stopped now and we'll get this posted. Thanks. All right. Bye.